All right. Today I want to look at Robot Damashi Zaku 2 from Gundam. I don't know what show series specifically. Um, I just started collecting this Robot Spirits line by Bandai a few weeks ago. I have a few. And I just got this one on Saturday, yesterday. And it's really, really great and a lot of fun. So I wanted to look at it really quick. Um, look at all of the stuff it comes with. It just comes with a ton of accessories, which is one of the reasons why it's so great. Let's look at the body first really quick. This is basically a figure arts uh, level line for mech suits. The majority seem to be from Gundam. But there are a few other things in there that I don't know about. They've got really good elbow articulation, lots of movement in the shoulders, in and outs, and up and downs, and all the way around. These skirts on this one are really uh, opposable. They go sideways and forward and whatnot to get out of the way of the legs. Uh, the one in the back does not move, but the one in the side does enough that you can still get his leg back pretty far. It's just, it's out a little bit, but it's not going out too much. Um, it's got some torso articulation, head articulation, good leg joints, lots of movement in the ankles, sideways, forwards, backwards. You can pose this guy any way you want. This one even has a thing where you can pop off his head and adjust the eye whatever angle you want it to be at. So that's pretty cool. Um, I should have talked about the box first really quick, but I forgot because I don't talk about boxes very much. All of the other ones I have have this red stripe on the side and then a white background. Um, or over here the background is white as well. But this one is brownish and red, so it stands out on the shelf next to all the other ones. So that's cool that out of the way. So, look at all the stuff he has. I already mentioned it. Let's look at it again. He's got hands, four different pairs. Relaxed, gun holding, other holding and punching hands that are on the figure to start with. He's got, sheesh, I don't know if we, let's just start and go over through some of this stuff. He's got spiked shoulder pads with a little attachment dealy in there which can actually come out. I don't know if you use it specifically on other with any of the other accessories but it attaches it to the shoulder and I guess anywhere else it has the same hard point and as you can see it has articulation like that. Um, so you can add a second one or you can take one of these shields and one of these brackets plug it in now he's got a shield on the side of his arm, and it also has some articulation since it's a peg. It can swivel, and it's got a little hinge. Um, and this also has a couple more points, so you can attach stuff to it. This, for example, can attach to there, although I think specific, that's specifically for this other accessory handle thing. Um, attach it here. And one of these hands, probably not the gun hand, but the just the grabby thing hand. You know, I cut the tip of my finger yesterday pretty badly, and you just don't always notice how often you use some of these other fingers as just support and whatnot. Except when I suddenly can't grab stuff. Okay, my only negative with this figure that I'm going to mention that I can think of right now is his hands are a little bit, they're easy to get off, but they're a little bit hard to get back on. I don't know if it's because the ball is just a little too thick or because that little sticky outy thing makes it a little hard to get the, the other hand on, but it's not as bad as figure arts, the figure arts double figures that are just impossible to get on. Choose a favorite pair of hands there and don't ever, ever change them again. 
but it's kind of kind of bad, um, tough. Um, I guess the other negative is because of this little sticky outy thing, it kind of limits the articulation in certain directions. So with this, now he's got some sort of punching, punching dealy. I'm gonna punch you. So what else can he do? Um, he's got a gun with a moving side grip and a removable ammo drum. This works really well in the gun holding hand as a separate sculpted trigger finger. Click. Oh, I just ripped that off. Never had that happen before. Click. If we put the other holding thing hand, since we're never going to use the fists again, let's get them out of the way. I'm getting the hang of it, but it's still a little bit of a hassle to get on. Bicep turns that I didn't mention before. And again, there's a fly in here. Why are there flies in my house? Do they not know that I wish to kill them all? Okay, there we go. Turn this this way. And bam. He can hold his gun, just like in the show. And as soon as I get the RX-78 Gundam, which is on the way, then he can shoot these fools. I put it on upside down so it sticks up too high. There we go. You can put the second shield on this side if you want to have dual shields. Again, you can attach this thing and just hold it out like a shield. What else has he got? He's got two missiles or things for the bazooka which I don't think actually go in anywhere. I didn't actually check to see if they're removable from their stem. Doesn't look like it. So I don't think you can actually do anything with these regarding the bazooka. But they have these little brackets that have a rectangular tab and slot on one side and a peg hole on the other so that you can peg it into the side, or his backpack rather, which his backpack has five points on it. Stick it in there, clip the, uh, clip the missile in like that if you wanted. And because there's two of them and they have a peg, a rectangular peg and slot on each side, you can actually string the two together. Click. And plug it onto his back somewhere if you want. Ta-da. But wait, it gets better than that. On some of the joints are just nice and snug that they hold their position. Sometimes they don't want to move. Um, let's look at this thing. This goofy looking contraption is a backpack. And it's even articulated. That closes. Why do you ask? For the bazooka. The bazooka is articulated in two points. It turns here, or it turns here. Um, I'll show him holding it later. Let's stick it in his backpack first. I'm not sure. I think I haven't quite got the hang of how you want everything laid out to put it in here. But you close it. And snug it up on the, the bazooka and it just holds it in place like that. It's got one peg on the back. Peg it into his back. And now he can start to carry all his gear. The ammo drum from his gun pops off and slides into this little slot since it's got a peg there. Click. Um there's a peg there or a hole there. Let's take the gun and rip off his hand. Oops. That is, like I said, the biggest drawback with this thing is that the hands are a little hard to get on and they pop off just a little too easy. The gun does not have a peg, but it does have a hole right there. 
And so you could peg it like that. The backpack also has a rectangular shaped slot. So you could take these guys and peg them in on one side. Click. Come on. Um, anyway, is there anything else I can attach to this? It seems like um, there's this little bracket and these little grenades, and they just click in like so, and it can hold both of them. They just click in nicely. Um, I don't remember if these are going to fit in his back skirt with the backpack attached. Probably not. So you can either have the rifle attached there, or pop that off, put the grenades here. Put this back on his back. What else has he got? Um, he's got two rocket pods that again have a rectangular peg and slot and a peg and a hole on each side so you can stick them wherever you want um, the box sticks them on his ankles or his shins I guess uh, but you could also I guess attach them to his shoulders his shields or his spiked shoulder pad because it also has a single peg hole um, and one more little bracket dealy with, again, a rectangular peg and a circular peg. I like to stick it on this side. Although, first it fits his cool little axe. And it's got some weird funny thing there that just fits right into there. Kind of clicks into place nice and securely, a little more securely than that backpack which keeps wanting to fall out. Oh, but hey, I just thought of this. You can also attach this over here. It might get in the way of the backpack. Okay, I guess you could stick it off. If I keep this in frame, you could stick it up here if you really wanted to. But then it's getting heavy on one side or the other. Um, so let's just put it on his skirt. That's nice and handy for when he needs to grab his axe to pummel you. So, he can hold, he can store everything on him and hold everything except for, I guess, his extra shoulder pad. I could find a place to use this. He could use it as a shield, even though he's got another shield on his arm. Crazy. It will be easier to remove that, like so. So the point I'm getting at is this toy is pretty darn fun. Lots of different display options and play value and and uh, I'm probably going to end up getting another one or maybe even two because you can easily kit them out distinctly looking to make them worth having more than one of. I do have um, the blue version on the way. I don't remember the guy's name. Jeff? Goof? Custom, one of the commanders from the original Mobile Suit Gundam movie that I'm in the middle of watching. I'm in the second one, which is where that guy showed up. And he was flanked by two of these, so I kind of want to get another one of these so I can at least have three little Zakus facing off against whiny Amaro and his RX-78. Come on. There we go. See, not always fun to get on. And now turning, bumping into that little thing. He lost his backpack. He lost his shoulder pads. None of these are big detriments, though, that stuff falls off a little bit. It's just because he can do so much, it's cool. 
And there he is holding everything except for his spare hands and his extra shoulder pad. So this guy's pretty cool. Um, he's even got a little peg hole up there to stand him on a Tamashi stage. Which this one didn't come with, but that's okay. Zaku 2 Robot Damashi. Recommend. Thank you for watching.